Dear students, welcome to another day's lecture in Elements of Machine Design. Today we are starting a new unit. Um, this unit's title is um, <coughs> Selection of Anti-Friction Bearings and Gears. <coughs> okay, this is the last uh, unit and uh, we are towards the fag end of our uh, syllabus. Okay, let us see what is uh, the, what is a bearing. Bearing we, we have seen when we are studying about shafts, that a shaft is to be supported on, uh, on some on supports and that support uh, was provided by a bearing. Bearing the name itself, it bears, it bears the load. A bearing is a machine element which supports another moving element which is a shaft. Uh, it permits a relative motion also between the contacting surfaces of the members while carrying the load. You see there are two things here. It is carrying the load at the same time a relative motion between the two contact surfaces it is permitting. Okay, Due to relative motion between the contact surfaces some power is wasted in overcoming frictional resistance. You see, because uh, you know there is contact between these two. What what happens is when you know when uh, shaft is rotating inside the bearing, you know there is some uh, loss of power due to friction. Okay, and if there is direct contact between the rubbing surface and uh, rubbing surface rapid wear occurs this is not a w h e r e wear w e w e uh, r e uh, a r w e r wear wear means you know jizna okay gizna english hindi mein gizna marathi mein jizna hota hai okay that is wear w e r wear occurs. Uh, for reducing this, lubrication must be provided such as vegetable oils, greases, etc. So now let us see what are the functions of the bearings. Bearing, the bearing supports, the bearing supports the shaft as the axle and holds it in correct position with respect to the frame or case. So this is the first thing that it supports the shaft. Supports the shaft means supports shaft and shaft and all the uh, load on the shaft. Okay. The bearing supports the shaft and holds it in the correct position. Second, bearing ensures free rotation of the shaft or axle with minimum friction. Here no in the first thing the bearing support the shaft or the axle it is not as here now they have said or like that it should be there are many mistakes in this book hmm? the bearing ensures free rotation of the shaft or axle with minimum friction okay you need not to talk about axle just to talk about shaft you say in the first thing it, it supports the shaft and holds it in correct position with respect to the frame. Second thing is the bearing ensures free rotation of the shaft with minimum friction. That means, you know, minimum friction we have to ensure by providing lubrication. Okay. And the bearing takes up the forces acting on the shaft or the axle and transmits them to the frame. You see, suppose uh, on the shaft we have mounted a pulley, belt pulley, gear and other things so the belt retentions the 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 forces that are coming because of the gears these forces also come on the bearing and they are transmitted to the frame uh, so these are the different functions of the bearings now let us see the classification of bearings in basings main bearings there are major two uh, uh, two major classifications are 
there are basically two types of pairings. One is called as sliding contact pairing and second is called a rolling contact pairing. It is not roller, rolling contact pairing. See, see on the basis of how the contact is. If the contact is sliding, sliding means what? Just, you know, the shaft is sliding in a hole of the bearing. That's all. That is a sliding contact bearing. A rolling contact bearing means, you see, uh, in uh, theory of machines you may have studied, and Tom you may have studied, there is a sliding contact bearing and low and uh, rolling contact bearing. Uh, you see, surface contact, line contact, point contact. I see lower pair, higher pair you may have studied. No, this is a kind of lower pair and this is kind of higher pair. Okay, sliding contact bearing. In the sliding contact bearing, further, the, you know, there are two types. Hydrodynamic bearings and hydrostatic bearings. Okay, this is one way of classifying the sliding contact bearing. And the sliding contact bearings can also be classified as guide bearings, journal bearings, thrust bearings. Okay. Journal bearings for the classification. Full journal bearing, pivot journal bearing. Pivot journal bearing. Okay. Then thrust bearings is pivot or step bearings or collar bearings. These collar bearings, moon collars, thrust. Thrust means a side thrust. You see, from the side, if some uh, forces are coming, thrust bearings will be able to bear them. Okay. Okay. These are the different types of, uh, the, this is the classification of the sliding contact bearing. Now, uh, I, say, uh, I, will sh I will show you some pictures of sliding contact bearing. You see here, you see, you see the shaft is here, some bush is provided around it and uh, um, this is the bearing block, this is the bearing housing. You see, this is a sliding contact bearing. Okay, the whole surface is coming in contact. You see, otherwise, you know, it can be like uh, this, you see. This is the shaft, this is the bearing, and in the middle, some oil film is uh, provided to reduce the thing. These are some of the, uh, you know, pictures of uh, sliding contact bearings. Now, let us see about the roller contact bearings. Roller contact, rolling contact bearings. Rolling contact bearings can be ball bearings and roller bearings. In ball bearings, it is a single row deep groove ball bearing, single row deep groove ball bearing with fillet notch, angular contact bearing, shielded bearing, sealed bearing, self-aligning bearings, double row deep groove ball bearing, double row angular contact bearing, thrust ball bearing. You know, these are different types. Roller bearings, cylindrical roller bearings, spherical roller bearing, tapered roller bearing, needle roller bearing, tapered uh, roller thrust bearing. You see, like that, you know, different types. You see, you need not be worrying, you need not write about all these things. Okay. Same one or two things you can write a single row, deep group ball bearing. Uh, or simply deep groove wall bearing, okay, angular contact bearing, okay, this thrust ball bearing, like that. Some three, four, you write, okay, if they ask you about the classification, okay, okay. This classification according to the um, nature of relative motion between the two contacts, um, contacting surfaces. That is what we have seen. Sliding contact bearing, rolling contact bearing. So sliding contact bearing, the bearings in which the contacting surface either make a sliding contact or are separated by a film of lubricant are known as sliding contact bearing. In rolling contact bearing, the bearings in which the contacting surfaces have rolling contact are known as roller contact bearing. 
see due to but these have this you see unless proper lubrication is provided this will have more friction and this will have less friction but there are you know it is possible with proper lubrication to get uh, lesser um, you know friction in the sliding contact bearing than the rolling contact bearing okay so due to low friction offered by rolling contact bearings they're also known as anti-friction bearings so when you are saying anti-friction bearings it is the rolling contact bearings not sliding contact bearing okay so this is the ma major difference so here surface is making contact here no either he surface contact is there either here a line or a point contact if it is a roller it will be a line contact if it is a ball it is a point contact like that so therefore less friction because of low friction they are called as anti-friction bearings okay and uh, in sliding contact bearing there is hydrodynamic bearings in hydrodynamic bearings the load is supporting the high fluid uh, film it is created due to the shape and relative motion between the surfaces you see journal bearing at rest will be like this you know it is little exaggerated so much gap won't be there between the bearing and the shaft okay for us uh, for us to understand so much gap is shown so see when it is when the shaft is not rotating it will be touching here okay when the journal starts when uh, when the shaft starts rotating okay it is rotating like this it may move a little this side still contact is there but uh, when it is at full speed what happens the shaft uh, between the shaft and the bearing there is no contact a thin film is there because of the uh, because of the motion of the shaft inside the bearing there will be a film here so it is ensured that you know see all this will be sealed it is not that oil will fall off okay this is oil okay this is oil this okay so therefore uh, you know because there is no contact at all so the friction can be very less you know such types of bearings are called as hydrodynamic bearings okay the moving surface pulls the lubricant into the wedge shaped zone this is the wedge shaped zone this okay so wedge shaped zone at a velo at a velocity sufficiently high to create a high pressure film necessary to separate the two shafts against the load you see in case of uh, you know um, uh, in the thermal stations where the turbines and other things are to be uh, mounted so turbine shafts and other things they use uh, you know these kind of bearings okay okay in principle the principle of working is shown um, initially the okay I have told you all that okay uh, now the advantages of hydrodynamic bearings hydrodynamic bearings mm, say they are simple in construction easy to maintain uh, have low initial as well as maintenance cost so they do not require auxiliary equipment like pumps okay limitations are they cannot be used for low speed application because turbines you know remove at very high speed therefore in turbines it can be used but for low speed applications it can by not be used very high frictional character uh, frictional characteristics at low speeds if it's low speeds if you are operating then there will be surface contact therefore more friction will be there they have poor positional accuracy you see uh, because no it may move in that gap the positional accuracy may not be there they offer high starting friction starting uh, no friction will be more uh, uh, applications where it is used uh, they are used in engines engines also what speeds uh, it will be in thousands or you know four thousand five thousand six thousand uh, like that uh, rpm will be there okay large centrifugal pumps hydraulic turbines etc okay then the another type is hydrostatic bearings 
hydrostatic bearings means you see this is the journal and, uh, the, 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 this is the bearing and this is the shaft okay and uh, uh, you know there will be a oil film around see in hydrostatic bearings this is static and that first was dynamic in hydrostatic bearings the load supporting the high pressure fluid film is created by an external pump this is the difference here an ex here here an external pump is there whereas in the hydrodynamic bearings there is no external pump okay so the lubricant which is pre pressurized externally is supplied between the two surfaces you see this is because of this pump is pumping therefore uh, you know it is ensuring that the, the, there is a uh, fluid film there lubricant film there okay so unlike the hydrostatic bearings hydrodynamic bearings hydrostatic bearings do not require motion of one surface related to another so in the hydrodynamic bearings it is necessary that this should be rotating the under wedge shape uh, you know fluid film should be created by the rotation of the shaft whereas in this case it is not necessary Now let us see the advantages, limitations and applications of the hydrostatic bearings. Hydrostatic bearings offer following advantages. It can take heavy loads even at exceptional low speeds. See the hydrodynamic bearings, high speed was required. Hydrostatic bearings, low speeds, you can use it. Load carrying capacity is independent of the speed. Uh, they have very low frictional characteristics even at the starting. So because an external pump is used, even at the starting also there is no problem they have high positional accuracy it is not that you know the shaft will be moving inside that uh, this thing you uh, know it is positioned at one place limitations of hydrostatic bearings they require auxiliary pumps like uh, auxiliary equipment like pumps filters oil supply line uh, hence the system is more complicated they have high initial as well as maintenance cost overall power loss that is frictional loss plus pumping loss is not necessarily low you see if you only talk about friction it may be less but if you talk about you know pumping also you are uh, spending energy okay then so then you cannot say that it is very low okay applications of hydrostatic bearing hydrostatic bearings are used in vertical turbo generators ball mills large telescopes you see large telescopes and other they won't be moving always only when you, you know very rarely they'll be moving gyroscopes machine tools etc this uh, hydrostatic bearings will be used now classification according to the relative motion between two surfaces so here the sliding contact bearings are divided into three types as follows guide bearings uh, you see it is guide bearings with the relative the relative sliding motion between the two parts is linear see like this if this is one um, uh, you know it, if this is the bearing and the, the, this is the thing that is it is supporting and it is motion is like this then it is uh, guide uh, bearings examples guide ways of lathe machine see guide ways of lathe machine piston cylinder assembly of ic engines uh, head cross head of steam engine see actually we don't when we look at those things we don't say they are bearings but you know they also can be classified see like uh, like this uh, you know piston cylinder are we saying they are bearings but anyway we can say kind of you know according to the actual definition of uh, these things it can be called as uh, bearings okay then journal bearings journal or sleeve bearings you see these are all journal bearings journal or sleeve bearings you see now this is a bearing and this they are called as calling as journal here hmm. this is the full journal bearing and this is the partial journal bearing okay it is see if uh, 
only stationary thing you have to support you don't need the full you know journal if it is rotating only you need full journal then we have thrust bearings thrust bearings means if the relative sliding motion between the two parts uh, is of rotation and the pressure on the bearing is parallel to the axis of the shaft the bearing is called thrust bearing that's what i said no from the sides uh, if the thrust is coming if from the sides a thrust is coming that if you are able to bear you see like this see this is uh, load is coming like this also on your bearing okay then th this is this kind of bearing is a five volt bearing this is a collar bearing you see this is collar is the thing that is supporting okay such kind of bearings are called thrust bearings so some of the bearings you know they can radial load also thrust uh, side uh, thrust also it can bear applications of sliding contact bearings sliding contact bearings are used in uh, following cases as a crankshaft bearing in petrol and diesel engines crankshaft bearings yeah crankshaft is to be supported so there in there you know, the sliding contact bearings okay steam and gas turbines marine applications large size conveyors large size and fuel pumps these are some of the things that they use okay then next the properties of sliding contact bearings what is this properties of sliding contact bearing materials okay what should be the materials they should have high compressive strength fatigue strength what is this embeddability bondability conformability corrosion resistance thermal conductivity thermal expansion so these are some of the properties we are not going to discuss each and everything let's see embeddability this only we will see what is embeddability new term i am seeing here the ability of the bearing material to accommodate or embed small particles of dust grit etc without scoring the material of bearing that is embeddability it is able to embed the things uh, what things dust dust and small particles okay M then bondability many high capacity bearings are made of bonding one or two thin layers of a bearing materials to high strength steel sheet uh, steel shell strength strength of bond is important consideration by selecting the bearing there should be a full stop here okay see if, if there is if uh, one or more thin layers of bearing uh, well layers of bearing material is used they should be bonding between themselves that is bond, bond uh, bondability okay then conformability it is the ability of the bearing material to accommodate shaft deflections shaft de deflections and bearing inaccuracies by plastic deformation without much wear uh, and heating is called conformability so they should be you know any inaccuracies in the shaft deflections or inaccuracies in the bearing should be accommodated by plastic deformation or creep they are saying so over a period of time huh? so such things are called conformability okay now let us see and the ball bearing in ball bearings one minute let us see anything else is there uh, classification of rolling contact bearing rolling contact bearings can be ball bearing roller bearing you know if uh, how a ball bearing is you see this uh, most often you may have seen if you see it's a ball bearing this comes to your mind not journal bearings isn't it okay anyway see this is the bore hole bore uh, where the shaft sits this is the bore then there is an inner race there is an outer race and inner race outer race between them there will be balls and these are the uh, separators separators or retainers you can say okay so that the balls will not everything come together and they will be maintained at a space okay the ball bearing ball and roller bearings consist of inner race which is mounted on the shaft 
are journal and an outer race which is carried by housing or casing. In between the inner and outer rays, there are balls or rollers. If ball bearing, this will be ball. And roller bearing, this will be roller. Okay. A number of balls or rollers are used and these are held at proper distances by retainers so that they do not touch each other. The retainers are thin strips and is usually in two parts which are assembled after the balls have uh, after the balls have been properly spaced okay the ball bearings are used for light loads and the roller bearings are used for heavier loads when compared between these two okay now let us see what the ball bearing the ball bearing spherical balls are used spheres balls cherre is the mal karte hain par they are used uh, as a rolling element. The contact between the inner rays, the, the ball or the outer rays is a point contact. Point contact, you see, that's why friction will be very less. So it is a higher pair. The ball bearings are classified as single dupe. Uh, okay, so many other classifications are there. Uh, I'm not going into deep into this. Okay. Now let us come to uh, let us see what is in our syllabus and then we will pro okay now let us see about the roller bearings in the roller bearings um, you know roller bearings are uh, the roller bearings use cylindrical rollers taper rollers spherical rollers as the rolling elements actually as you see here see this is a cylindrical roller this is a tapered roller this is a needle bearing you see just a small flat uh, cylindrical thing then this is a spherical roller this is a little spherical like this roller and then tapered roller thrust bearing this will bear uh, you know radial load also and thrust uh, load also now let us see the comparison of ball and bear, roller bearings. You see, rolling elements. Here their balls are used. Here no rollers are used. Okay, nature of contact. Here in this case, point contact is there. In this case, uh, line contact is there. Load carrying capacity. Uh, here the load cap carrying capacity is less because it is point contact. Here the load carrying capacity is more because of the line contact and if you talk about the radial dimensions radial dimension bole to center se kitna dur jata hai ye to iska dimension thoda bada hota hai ball bearing ka ah uh, kyunki ye pura spirit spear ball cherre ka pura size aana chahiye aur iska dimension kam hota hai whereas in actual dimensions से रोलर लंबे होते हैं तो लोअर रोलर का एक्शियली मतलब पैरल टू दी शाफ्ट इसका डिस्टेंस बड़ा होता है इसका इसका डायमेंशन बड़ा होता है इसका डायमेंशन किसका बॉल बेरिंग का डायमेंशन कम होता है नाउ इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ रोलिंग कॉन्टेक्ट बेरिंग्स से एप्लीकेशन इंडस्ट्रियल एंड ऑटोमेटिक गेयर बॉक्सेस एंड डिफरेंशियल ऑफ द ऑटोमोबाइल Electric motors, every electric motor will be having these ball, these bearings, uh, machine tools, spindles, uh, small size centrifugal pumps, automobile front and rear axles, etc. Advantages, you know, the ability to resist the shock load, easy for mounting, low starting and running friction, more accuracy in shift shaft alignment, compact, they require less space low maintenance cost uh, okay because of no necessity of lubrication during operation okay but still we uh, supply some uh, put some grease and other things but still that's why it is called as anti-friction bearings no but not like you know hydrostatic bearing hydrodynamic bearings where you now so much of oil that uh, you know is required in a hydrostatic bearing, you have to pump and you have to ensure that oil re is retained and if anything is uh, leaking also, you have to fill it. You know, here, not, nothing like that. Okay, disadvantages. Uh, more noisy at high, uh, at high speeds, 
initial cost is high design of shaft and housing features are more complicated see here let us see applications of uh, bearings of different types deep groove wall bearing uh, it can take radial as well as thrust load because they have high radial load carrying capacity and a moderate thrust capacity see radial load means radial load means load that is coming perpendicular to the shaft uh, thrust means that load which is coming along the axis of the shaft parallel to the shaft okay uh, shaft uh, uh, axis okay this is less uh, uh, you know high radial load and moderate thrust load they can bear okay it is used in electric motors machine tools spindles uh, small types of centrifugal pumps it is used taper roller bearing it is used to make radial as well as thrust load because such types of bearings can carry bo both radial as well as thrust loads it consists of rolling elements like cones it is used in industrial and automobile gearboxes and automobile front and rear axle housings okay thrust roller bearings these are used to take pure thrust loads you see more thrust load is coming a little thrust load is coming means other bearings can bear but you know more thrust load is coming then you have to use thrust roller bearings because it can carry only thrust loads it is used in power plant and mine pumps in clutches of automobiles clutch, clutch will be actually moving you see therefore thrust roller bearings are used there needle roller bearings these are useful where radial space is limited they have a uh, high radial load carrying capacity these bearings are used when heavy loads are to be carried with an oscillatory motion it is used in uh, piston pin bearings in heavy duty diesel engines in different in, dif uh, in differential of an automobile solid bush type journal bearings these are used in turbo machinery because the shaft transmits high power and uh, it's all used in centrifugal pump and turbine shafts okay then uh, there is a differentiation between sliding contact rolling contact and uh, sliding contact bearing the size of the bearing is large for same load carrying capacity here it is less coefficient of friction in sliding contact is high and rolling contact is less no pre-loading is necessary here pre-loading is necessary to minimize deflection and more accuracy you see sliding contact bearing life is less here life is more cost is less more costly shaft and uh, housing feature is easy shaft and housing feature is complicated resistance to shock is higher resistance to shock is lower due to lubrication less sensitive to, uh, to dirt these are sensitive to dirt agar wahan par wahan par jo hai na dust jaake jama hota hai to ball rotate karna band ho jata hai okay so wo bearing jo hai na pura jam ho jata hai okay sometimes you you have seen that ball you know you have to change the bearings because the balls are not rotating and all okay housing diameter is less housing diameter is less this is the one classification uh, th this is the differentiation between rolling contact and sliding contact bearings okay there is something called as basic static load rating co which is also can be called as basic static capacity see the static load static means static dynamic means dynamic is you know um, static means it is stationary dynamic means you know there is a rotation involved okay static load is the load acting on the bearing when the bearing is stationary if it is not moving just to you know no motion is there then what load is coming is uh, is known as static load 
When the bearing is subjected to a static load, it produces permanent deformation in the ball. You see, when load is coming, the ball won't be wholly spherical. So, it, there will be some permanent deformation. Okay. Because, the, because of the constant static load that is upon the ball, there will be a permanent deformation in the ball. And uh, also in the races, which, pro, which increase with increasing load. The lesser load, less plastic uh, permanent deformation, more load, more uh, permanent deformation. The basic, the basic static load rating, CO, is defined as the static radial load which corresponds to a permanent deformation of the ball and race at the most heavily stressed contact equal to 0 0.001 times the ball diameter. You see, the for what load you know the the permanent deformation comes to 0 0.000 3 times 0 1 uh, times the ball diameter deformation takes place that load is called as static uh, basic static um, load load rating see see for very accurate per uh, per applications no even that uh, what is plastic uh, permanent deformation it is of importance the value of basic static load rating of the bearings are given uh, in the bearing manufacturers catalog everybody you know for example skf bearings are there they have their own catalog and that catalog will give you what is the basic static load rating okay anyway according to the indian standard uh, uh, 3H23 of the year 1984, the basic static load rating CO in newtons for ball is, you see, given by this CO. You see, if it is asked for a small question, you should be able to write this equation and then what are the, uh, what, what the meaning of different terms is. Okay, CO is equal to C naught is equal to F naught N Z T square cos alpha, where N is the number of balls uh, and Z is number of ball per row. See, small n is the number of rows of balls. You see, if normally one row is there, but sometimes two rows can be there. So one or two, whatever it is, will have to be Z is the number of balls per row. Then D is the diameter of the ball in millimeters alpha is the nominal angle of the contacts okay and f0 is the factor depends upon the type of bearing 3.33 for self aligning ball bearing 12.3 for radial contact and the angular contact uh, group ball bearing okay like that this is the uh, basic static load rating now basic dynamic load rating c okay when see when the bearing starts rotating the load is more uniformly distributed than when it is uh, static in static condition the dynamic um, di dynamic capacity of bearing is based on the fatigue life of the material see the dynamic load rating is defined as the constant stationary radial load which a group of apparently identical bearings with the stationary outer rays can withstand for a rating of L10. Rating life of L10 of 1 million, 1 million means 10 to the power 6 revolutions of the inner rays. It is the life which 90% of the bearing will complete or exceed before uh, fatigue fails. You see, when we were talking about fatigue life of the shafts, we were talking about 10 to the power 7 uh, you know, revolutions. That means 1 crore revolutions. Here, you know, we are talking about 1 million only, 10 to the power 6 revolutions. It should be able to bear. Okay. Such a load is called as, say, the basic dynamic load rate. Okay. This is denoted by C. The rating life of this in this definition is value of dynamic load rating is given in the manufacturer's catalog the equivalent dynamic load 
it is defined as the constant stationary radial load which if applied to a bearing with the rotating inner ring and the stationary stationary outer ring would give the same bearing life as do the applied combined loading you see this pe is the equivalent dynamic loading in newtons which is given by this relation capital x capital v f suffix, suffix r plus y f suffix a bracket close k suffix a you see P E is the equivalent dynamic load, F R is the radial load, this one, then F A is the actual thrust load, this is the radial component, this is the thrust, uh, actual thrust component, okay, then uh, X is the radial factor, Y is the thrust factor, and V is the rotation factor, and K A is the load factor or application factor. 1 for inner race rotating, 1.2 for outer race rotating and 1 for self-aligning bearing. You see these are the things now. See the inner rating, outer, uh, inner race and outer race. Out of that one is always stationary, the other will be rotating. Okay. Anyway, so see these are the only you have to remember these, uh, you know, these relations about this because you know they may ask you for short uh, short answer answer short answer questions maybe some two or mark or four marks they may ask you okay okay now let us see about the life of the bearing bearing life you see the the load acting on the bearing when it is rotating is known as dynamic load and uh, when you are talking about life the life of an individual bearing is defined as the total number of revolutions which the bearing can complete before the first evidence of fatigue failure develops on the balls or races. Uh, races. See, it is how many revolutions, number of revolutions. And what they are saying, experience has shown that apparently identical bearings of same material and even working under identical conditions have different, different lives. Okay. Since the life of an individual bearing cannot be predicted, it is necessary to define the life of a group of apparently identical bearings. The bearing life can be defined by rating life. Now, rating life, L10. See, this is given as L10. L10 is the, the rating life of a group of apparently identical bearings is defined as the number of revolutions that 90% of a group of bearings will complete or exceed before the first evidence of fatigue failure develops. It is known as, it is also known as L10 life. Okay. Then we come to life load relationship. See, extensive laboratory testing and subsequent statistical analysis have shown that the relationship between dynamic load C and equivalent load P and the rating life L10 can be expressed like this. L10 is equal to C is the dynamic load and P is the equivalent load, C upon P to the power A, where A is a constant. It is 3 for ball bearing, 10 by 3 for roller bearing. This is the life load relationship. I think we'll stop here for today. Uh, we will see in the next lecture. Thank you.